his life. God, we thank you for touching Brother Bradshaw, Lord. And Lord, for being with him through that procedure, Lord. That, oh, God, we just thank you right now for that. And God, these needs has been asked, given in tonight. Lord, you know each and every one of them. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, as we pray for Sister BJ's family, Lord, and her request tonight, God, would you reach down, Lord, and meet that need. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, the different hands that went up tonight, Lord, the unspoken requests. God, we thank you because you are a prayer answering, Lord. You're a prayer answering God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we thank you because we can come only before you to the grace to find help in time of need. Oh, we bless you tonight, Lord Jesus. We magnify you. Lord, touch the remaining part of this service, oh God. And God, we just give you praise. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. 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 Thank God. I'm ready, are you? Amen. I ain't getting ready. I got ready. I'm, I'm staying ready. <laughs> I want to keep on moving on, don't you? Thank God. Appreciate you coming out to the house of the Lord tonight. Good crowd tonight. Good to see you. I love you. It's just like coming home every time I get to come back. <laughs> You're part of it. Thank God. We're we're all one family, ain't we? Yeah. I've had something rolling around in my mind today. I've been trying to pray. Not trying, I've been praying. God's, God's been dealing with me about something. If you have your Bible, turn with me to the book of Isaiah, chapter number 6. Very, very familiar scripture. Isaiah, chapter number 6. I might have to stop and cough. I've been battling this cold since November, so it's just bear with me, all right? <laughs> I don't feel bad. I don't think I'm contagious, but it just keeps lingering around. Isaiah chapter number 6. If you're able to stand, I'd ask you to stand. If you're able, if you're not, understand. We'll read a few of these verses and then we'll go to the Lord in prayer. It said, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up, and His train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings, with twain he covered his face, with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto the other and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. And the door, and the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Would you help me pray tonight? Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you. God, take full control, O oh God. We're not here, O oh God, for socialism, O oh God. Social, to socialize together, O oh God. We're not here, O oh God. To, Lord, just see or be seen, and we don't want to just speak, Lord God, but we want to speak as the oracles of God. God, I pray, Lord, these lips of clay, Lord God, one time, Lord God, help me, God, to deliver your heart. God, not my heart, Lord God, not some, but your heart tonight, Lord God. God, increase us in the faith, Lord God. Lift our eyes, Lord God, to you tonight, Lord God. Let us see you, Lord Jesus, in a new and living way. Father, we be careful to praise you and honor you and glorify you for everything that you do. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. All right. You can be seated if you can. I've been thinking on these and I've been ministering. Last, well, last night I, had to, I got to preach up at Macon Valley uh, Convalescent Hall over there. And God just been trying, I believe He's speaking to us. He's speaking to me. If you don't get nothing out of it, this is what he's dealing with Clay Pack about. I hope you get something out of it too. You know, God deals with us. You know, we talk about you talk about ministry. You know, we talk about a lot of people talk about ministry and they, they talk about what to do and how to do. And and our ministry, ministry, if you're in any kind of ministry in the church, it's got to come out of relation. Yes. It don't just happen. You, you can build a sermon. You can go online and get a sermon. You can find that thing. You can preach it. You know you can get you an outline. You can memorize that thing. You can preach it. 
But you know, real ministry, the real ministry of, of the gospel of Jesus Christ comes out of a true relationship with Him. That's the only way it works. It's not just something we write on paper. It says our hearts are in tune with Him and as He's attuning us up to His will. That's what I'm going to try to preach and, and get a hold of tonight. But when you look at, at what was going on in, in this time in Isaiah's life, you look at what's happening. He's already prophesying. He prophesies it. And you read chapter number 1, chapter number 2, chapter number 3, and he prophesies some pretty big woes to Israel and things that's going on and, and what's happening. And he, he's revealing the sin. When, he's, when you read the first chapter, He's revealing what's going on. But in, in the year that King Uzziah, see, you've got to look at what was going on in the day. See, Israel had hit a peak right there in Uzziah. See, Uzziah was a, was a good king. And he sought after the Lord. And he wrought victory. Uh, he sought after God. And all of him, there was victory going on and things just lifted up. Looked like revivals are happening. Look like things is going on, you know what? But something happened in that time. He did something he wasn't supposed to do. He took a censure in his hand and he did something he wasn't called to do and it made him mad. He was lifted up in pride. He got lifted up in pride. But see, Isaiah's alive. He's prophesying during this time. But he's looking. I believe if you get to get, get what's going on, everybody's looking at King Uzziah for revival. Because things isn't going pretty good, you know. Israel's on top again. She ain't on the bottom. Now, her enemy, see, she's a fight again. She's a fight, and, and she's overcoming her enemies. Because we got a righteous king in her. You know, he's a doing exploits for God. And things isn't looking up. Do you know that's the way the United States gets? You know, we think about, you, you look at the United States, and, and we got a whole lot of them. We put a whole lot in our elections. And I hear the you can turn on news, that's a whole lot here, and I get sick of it. I love we got to pray for our nation. I believe that, but I'm not throwing or casting any songs. But we look at and when it goes for the for the the good, you know, we rejoice some when Trump got in there. You know, it's kind of like a reprieve, you know. Because there were some things, you know, he, I don't know how he's standing. I don't know anything. I don't know how he is. But I know he's making some pretty good decisions for the things that we stand for. I mean, he's standing up for life. He's standing up. He's standing against the boy. He's, he's placed some pretty good things to help us. You know, true concern. True. I'm talking about we can get to our roots, you know. But you know, revival ain't going to happen through him. Revival ain't going to happen something. It ain't going to it ain't gonna turn around because we elect somebody in office. It ain't going to happen when, because we elect a good congressman that goes along with our beliefs and way that we think. I ain't saying don't vote. You need to. But if we're looking for revival, in that sense, we're going to fall flat on our face as a church. If we're looking for that, for a man, for somebody, He was in the temple. 
He's a statesman's prophets. He's a statesman. He, he's in, he knows what's going on. But when he died, I believe Isaiah's heart begins to seek after God. How many has ever come to think, what are we going to do? Have you ever been there in your life? What are we going to do? What are we going to do now? I've had some, how many's ever had some strong arms in the spirit in your life? I'm not, I'm talking about godly men you looked up to, godly women you've looked up to. I mean, they you know their life, you know that you know they walk with God, you know they had power with God. You know what I'm talking about? People in your life that you've marked. You know the word says we can mark some. You can mark them. They so walk in this way. And you can mark their lives and see how they walk, see how they live, see, and see what God does. Is it always cake and ice cream? No. Are they hard days to go through? Yes. Are there bitter toils and sorrows? To go? Yes. But is there victory in the midst coming and peace in the heart? Yes. yes. Even in the midst of everything that's gone wrong, there's still peace, there's still joy, there's still contentment in the man called Jesus Christ. Alright. Sitting on the throne. 
throne. Amen. He's still in control. Sometimes it seems like he's out of control. But Jesus Christ still rules and reigns in the kingdom of men. Whether we like it or whether you, whether they like it or not, he's still in control. You ask Daniel, Israel's in captivity. He don't forget God. And God don't forget him. When he began to seek God and began to pray, what began to take place? God showed up. God began to answer him. God began to reveal it him. And we got the book of Daniel, which is the book of, I heard people say the book of Revelation is the end of Daniel. Because God opened his eyes what he's going to do. He still rules and reigns. He showed old King Nebuchadnezzar, I still rule and reign in this kingdom. God still rules and reigns. Jesus Christ is still the author. Everything still revolves around the United States may left somewhat. Thank God we still got... You know what I believe is holding back judgment from the United States? I believe there's more than ten righteous here. I don't agree with what's being passed in some of these states. It's enough to make us sick. If it don't turn, it, that needs, it needs, it does, it needs to make a, what's our answer? I'm not getting political. I'm telling you what's it going to take to turn us around. What's it going to take? See, it's got to start here. That's right. That's right. That's right. It starts here. And it moves right out there. And when it moves right out there, then it goes further. It'll hit the whole state. And then it don't stop at the state. It can go all the way to the White House. Do you know that this church can shake that? This church, this church, the church of the living God can shake this nation. It can shake the leadership. If we'll get the vision of Christ back, if we'll get our eyes set back on the answer, oh, hallelujah to the Lamb of God, our eyes must be set, steadfast and unmovable in Jesus Christ. I sat in church the other morning. It's been about two Sundays ago. I was just sitting there. I got to church early. I was just praying. I didn't have to preach or nothing. I was just praying. And this began to flood up. What's our source? What's the source? We got to get back to the source. I'm not saying that you're not in the... I'm talking about getting all the way. I'm talking about seeing Him. Letting Him shake us. Seeing Him. I'm not saying you don't know Him. I'm not saying this church don't know I'm talking about getting to a place where he's, that He's our everything. Individually and corporately. It don't revolve around a program. I know you. I know this church and I know your life and I know that's not the way it is. But I'm saying in Christendom today, there's a lot of programs. Anything wrong with the program? No, oh, I don't guess there's anything wrong with the program. I'm not saying that we don't we shouldn't have some things go on. But I'm telling you what we need to get back to is the focus point. Where is our source? Is is ministry our source? If ministry is our source, we're gonna fail. If what I'm doing for Him is my source and I'm leaving Him out. I'm not saying we don't minister. We've got to minister in this generation. We've got to be and do what God's called us to do. But our source is not what we do. It's the reason we do what we do. Our source don't lie within our brothers and sisters. I love you. And I draw strength from you. And we can draw strength one from another. And that's the way it is in the book of Acts. They, they, were, they had fellowship one with another. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. We need that more today than we ever have. But that's not our source. Yes, amen. Bless the Lord. Uh, yes. Yes. Bless you. I love the church. I love, I love her. It's his bride. This is not my source. 
I get what I need here. And you and I get what we need here. But if our source ain't from Calvary, if our source ain't coming from Jesus Christ, we're going to miss it. We're going to miss it. We, get, we got so caught up in individuals that we've left him out of the picture. I love reading about the old patriarchs. I do. I love reading about those that God used mightily. And God done the work in. And I get caught up in what God done in our life. Oh Lord, but if I leave him out, they're not my sword. Mark Luther's not my sword. All the John Wesley's is not our sword. What happened over here is the people that caused it. Not it's oh hallelujah. It's who they got a hold of. His name is Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. When it looked like we couldn't go nowhere. When it looked like his bleak. Isaiah went to the house of God and he found him. <laughs> they wouldn't know why they are but him and God. <laughs> And I believe when we seek Him with all of our heart, you know what the Word said? He said we'll find Him. I don't know how long that takes. Sometimes that takes longer than a five-minute dip in order. Sometimes it takes a little longer, maybe 30 minutes. But it's all words along the time. We've got to get back and we've got to seek the face of God. Not for what He can do for me, but for who He is. He is our source of life.
Sometimes I get it done, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I guess they say it's in my life. I don't know. But you know, there's been times I hit my knees. I wasn't wanting something from him except to know him. Except to not just know him. I want to know him. He's the source of all living. He's the only reason I'm alive today. I should have been dead and buried in a grave. Six inches, I'd have hit a trench. I'd hit a trench for I hit an 18 wheeler. Six more inches would have hit frame to frame. I ought to be dead. But God had mercy on me. I don't know. Maybe it was for right here, right now. We may not see tomorrow. But tonight we have. And I believe we can touch heaven tonight. There's nothing. There's nothing keeping us. Did you know that he opened it up to us? When he prayed through for you and I in the garden. He wasn't doing that for himself. He said, God, if you're willing, let this come back for me. If it was important for Jesus to pray through, why is it not important for us? He's God. Why did he, in his humanity, he had to pray through to the Father? When everybody else was asleep, he got up way before daylight. And he went up. And he got a hold of the Father. See, it ain't about... We need to do it corporately. And I want to see us pray tonight. But if, only, if the only time we pray is right now, and try to pray through just when we come, if we, you know, I'm just getting mean. It's forsaken altars in the home. The reason why we went as far as we have. I didn't say we forsook it here. But when we forsake it in the home, they'll take the prior out of school. It didn't take them long, did it? How'd that take place? The altar left the house. Now I can't I can't go along. I wasn't I wasn't even alive when that took place. I can't give an answer for that. But I can give an answer right here. And I can give an answer for myself tonight. And you can give an answer. You may not have nothing to do with that. You may not have forsook the altar. You know what I mean? But we can make that thing right tonight. We can start tonight making that thing right. And we can see God move. I was praying in the altar one time. It's been several years ago. And I won't forget, never forget what he taught me. I was crying to God with everything I had in me. And I began to pray this. Have you ever begin to pray a question? That you don't know where it came from? You know what I mean? It just ended. And I began to cry out and see God. In the in Mount City Church. I said, God, what's it going to take? I just want to see revival. I still want to see. That's my life. I don't, I'm not talking about just a series of meeting. We just gathered around here. I'm talking about something that'll turn this world upside down. I'm talking about what turns the communities upside down. <clears throat> and I was praying, I said, Lord, what's it going to take? What's it going to take? What's it going to take? And you know what he spoke to me? This is going to blow my mind. Jesus. 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 What's my answer for my problem? Jesus. What's our answer to this nation? Jesus. What's the answer to the law? Jesus. What's the answer to the baptism? Jesus. What's the answer to the power that we need? Jesus. Simply. Isaiah turned his eyes toward God. God showed up. And God dealt with Isaiah. I don't know of another prophet that prophesied more about Jesus than that man. He prophesied more about the coming Messiah. He dealt with Isaiah and had to do a little purging. You know, when we really get a hold of God, He's going to purge us. 
I want him to deal with me, don't you? We're never too, we're never, we've never gotten to a place where he or he don't need to deal with us on a very personal basis. That's the church. I've not reached there yet. If you have, I will talk to you. But I need him to deal with me all along the way. I want him to deal with me. I don't want him to leave me alone. I want him to break me for what breaks him. Oh, I want him to show me what he, you know what I mean? I want his heart. We was in prayer meeting the other night. I said, there's four things I desire. I want his heart. I don't want my heart, because my heart will fail me. My heart will lie to me. You know, he, he said the heart, uh, it's deceitfully wicked. They, they know the heart of man. It's, uh, it's just all kind of, and you know your heart and your feelings can lie to you. I said, I want the heart of God. I want the mind of God. I want the wisdom of God. And I want to see the power of God. That's what I want. Not for myself to be lifted up on no pedestal. Because if you want that, you're going to go nowhere. But if you allow Him to break you, I'm talking about break us to the very core. And break our hearts once again. Just for His own self to be glorified in you. That you can be broken. That He can be made whole in you. He loves you. He's not going to hurt us. But He's got to break us. Did He not break Isaiah? Did He not deal with Him? When He saw the glory, He said, Boy, is me. Because the closer we get to Him, the more I see me, the more the light comes on, the more I see that I've got to have Him. Without Him, I'm nothing. Without Him, church, we're nothing. We're not. We're nothing individually. We're nothing corporately without Him. If we get back to our source, I believe once again we can shake. We can see God move in every area. We can see Him deliver. We can see Him set free. But until then, we got to fight for them. we got to fight for them. Prior to some times of war, a lot of times it's just war with ourselves. Ask Jacob. <laughs> Jacob was a man with nothing but himself. But when he decided he was going to get rid of everything, he pushed everything out over that brook Kidron. Or over that brook, it wasn't Kidron. That's, that's another one. When he put everything over that brook, there he wrestled with a man all night. You know what I believe? He made business with God. He wasn't there to play games. Now's not the time. We've got to stand up. We've got to fight. We've got to lay hold of him. You know what the greatest part is? He'll lay hold of us the same as he did us. Jesus is still the answer for everything that we need. Everything we need is a person. Everything we need is a church. Everything this nation needs, he's still the answer. Whether they want to admit it or not, when we come back to him, we're going to find him. We get back to our soul. I love the pastors. I love the evangelists. I love them all. And they point us to the way. But Christ must be ultimately the source. You know, that's what the old timers got a hold of. They found out how to pray through. They learned how. They learned how to pray through. I believe that's an art we need to get back to. I'm not saying we don't know how to pray. I appreciate that. The prior warriors met here today. Thank you. I'm not, I'm not beating you up. I want to encourage you. Carry on, carry on. Don't give up. And I'm not here to cast you down tonight. I'm here to pick you up. Oh, Lord. Let's get back to what it is to get a hold of him. To where he gets a hold of us. You know, when we really get a hold of him, he'll change us. How many wants to be changed? Yes, Smith Wigglesworth 
said it's an ever increasing faith. All with all the time going. It's ever increasing, always increasing. But you know one thing I read about him? We was talking about him today. We was, one thing I said, he said, I feel like I've been hit by a freight train run over a thousand times. <laughs> but we don't want that part. We don't want him to heal with us. I want him to deal with me. So that we can make a difference. When God dealt with him, he said, you go tell them. You fill their ears full of my word, what I'm going to tell you. You fill their ears full. You make their heart heavy. You make their ears full. <laughs> oh, let's tell them who he is. Let's find him. I'm not saying you're lost. I'm just saying we need to get back a hold of him to where he gets back a hold of us. Oh, Lord, fills us with his spirit again. Oh, Lord, you know that don't just happen one time. That's every day. <laughs> That's all along the way. When the apostles, when the disciples prayed, they were shaken and they were filled. And that's like Pentecost. <laughs> you know what I mean? They were shaken and they were filled. They got along. They got a hold of them all along the way because he's their source. Is he your source? Is he what he lean? Is he, is he what you lean on all the time, or are we leaning on something else? You know, if we're not careful. I'm not saying you make an idol, but you know, he'll take away what we lean on. He took King Use eyes gone. Our hope of revival's gone. Moses, the man of God, brought him out of the land of Egypt. But you know what Moses did? Moses didn't make himself nothing. He made God everything. See, Moses was always trying to get him to look to him. He made to him everything. But you know what? Moses went on. Some of them's gone and went on. Not going to stay here. But if Jesus is our source, He arose the third day to live forevermore. He's not going anywhere. He's not leaving. Everything else will fail you. Your friends will fail you. Some of your closest friends may fail you. But Christ never fails. Christ don't fail. He didn't fail us at Calvary. He didn't fail us no way. He rose again victorious and said, Come. He told him, He said, I'm going away. I go. That, that bothered her mind. He said, Lord, we don't know where you're going and how can we go the way? Jesus said, I'm the truth. I'm the life. Yes. Don't look around. Look to me. You remember? I'm I'm hushed. I've got a hush. But you remember Peter? How when Jesus is resurrected, he comes up on the shore. He feeds him a little bread and little. You know, lay out the ship, maybe in the cop. John Pope Peter said, It's the Lord, he's over there on the shore. Peter dumped, looked, he called on, jumped in, said, I'm going to see him. He didn't wait on that boat to get there. He said, I've got to see him. <sighs> oh, he had everything he needed right there. He had fish, he had bread right there on the cold, everything he needed. All their substance he's got for us, he had it ready for him. He began to talk to Peter. He said, Peter, you love me? Yeah, you know what? He laughed. You know what he done? Faith. Three times he asked him about faith. And then he, I, I just, this is my picture. This might be the wrong picture, but I just picture him and Jesus just arm in arm and they're walking up through there and they're just conversating and here's John the following. Because he wants to walk close to the Lord too. He said, Jesus is 
talking to him. He said, Peter, when you was young, you done what you wanted to do. But when you get older, there's going to be another virtue and take you where you wouldn't go, where you couldn't go. Signify what that he should glorify God. You know what? You, they, you read it in the John 21. Signify what that he should glorify God. But he turns around and looks at John. He said, what shall he do? He said, you don't worry about him. You let me worry about him. You follow me. Let's follow hard after this Christ. I love me and I love my... I love, thank God for good pastor. Thank God. But let's get a hold of him. Let's follow him as he follows Christ. Let's get a hold of God. Let's get a hold of him for ourselves. Let's don't worry about that, what everybody else is doing. And let's you and I get a hold of him. Yes, amen. Yes. Let's follow him all the way. Because his end is eternal life. His end is joy unspeakable full of glory. His end is perfect peace and joy. In Him is deliverance and everything we need. He's our shepherd. I'm done. Who would you stand with me tonight? I'm sorry I'm long with you. Thanks, sir, for what I've said. I love you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father, I thank you tonight for what you're doing in this generation. Father, I hope, oh God, I'm not come. Oh God, tonight, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, I've not come, Lord God, to cast them down tonight, God. Father, I've come to encourage them, Lord God, tonight, God. I pray, Lord God, oh Lord, that we be encouraged that when you died on Calvary and you shed your blood for us, oh, that you give us access to the very throne room of God through simple faith. And every one of us has the same access to you. Oh, you're not keeping anybody out, but you open your is not in anything else. Oh, we've got to live holy. We've got to live righteous. Oh, but our source is in you. Oh, that makes us righteous. It's your blood. Oh, that's our source. It's your life that gives us life. Oh, it's not in anything we can obtain of ourselves, but it's what you did for us. Oh, Lamb of God, you opened it up to us. And I pray that we lay hold of it tonight in Jesus' name. I don't know what you have need of tonight. I hope and pray I've said something that will help you and strengthen you. That you can get a hold of God. That you can lay hold. And He'll reveal Himself. He'll open it up. And He'll shake us tonight. How many want to pray? Just pray. I, whatever you need, just call on Him. And seek His face for who He is. Oh, just uh, let Him deal with us once again. Oh, let Him fill us. Oh, change us. Oh, let His Son be glorified. Let Jesus be glorified in us tonight. Anybody want to pray tonight? We open up these altars. Oh, hallelujah. I love you. I praise you.